Blue Origin is often written off as just a copy of SpaceX, who doesn't accomplish nearly as much. Aside from this, the negative image that is often associated with Jeff Bezos doesn't help the company's case very much either. But what exactly is Blue Origin even working on? What are their plans for space? And how much progress have they made? Well, starting off, we have their new Shepard rocket. This is a relatively small rocket coming in at just 60 feet or about one-fourth the height of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. Technically, Blue Origin would become the first company to land a rocket booster safely after the new Shepard booster landed in 2015. Prior to this, SpaceX had already completed successful landings using their boosters, but they hadn't yet succeeded in landing a booster after a space flight. So, New Shepard did take this title. However, there are several differences between SpaceX's landings and Blue Origin's landings that should be noted if I don't want to get destroyed in the comment section. First of all, the masses of the rocket are radically different. Blue Origin has not revealed the mass of their New Shepard rocket, but considering that it is only one-fourth of the height of Falcon 9, it's likely significantly lighter. On top of this, the New Shepard's boosters start returning to Earth much earlier than Falcon 9's boosters. New Shepard's boosters start heading back at 100 kilometers in altitude, while Falcon 9's boosters don't start their descent till 200 kilometers in altitude. Consequently, the Falcon 9 booster is not only much heavier, but it's traveling considerably faster as well. New Shepard reaches up to Mach 3 during its flight, while Falcon 9 reaches between Mach 5.5 and Mach 7 before its booster starts to descent. With all that being said, SpaceX's landings are much more difficult as Musk pointed out. But New Shepard's booster landings are quite impressive nonetheless. Aside from being fully reusable, the New Shepard is expected to help pioneer the space tourism business. Their capsule has a volume of 15 cubic meters or 530 cubic feet and it is expected to fit up to 6 people at a time. The entire flight is only expected to last 11 minutes with about 4 being above the Kármán line or in space. Ticket prices are estimated to be about $200,000. As a result, the most direct competitor to the service would of course be Virgin Galactic. Virgin Galactic space tourism tickets also come in at $200,000 to $250,000. And they also only provide a couple of minutes of space time. So the ticket price and space time value are quite similar. However, the vastly different launch and landing systems will likely sway customers to prefer one or the other. Currently, New Shepard has completed seven successful test flights, mostly just carrying research equipment. Blue Origin was originally planning to launch a crew test flight using the New Shepard by the end of 2020, but that has since been pushed back. Considering that the rocket does seem to be breezing through its test flights, however, it's just a matter of time until they get to crewed flights, likely in 2021 or 2022. Moving on from the New Shepard, we have Blue Origin's upcoming New Glenn rocket. The New Glenn is a much more large scale rocket, coming in at about 95 meters. It still falls about 20 meters short of SpaceX's upcoming Starship rocket, but it's no doubt a behemoth. Consequently, the New Glenn has a payload capacity of 45 metric tons to low Earth orbit and 13 metric tons to geostationary transfer orbit. They also claim that New Glenn's 7 meter fairing provides twice the payload volume of any existing launch vehicle today. And the New Glenn booster is expected to be able to last 25 launches. Till very recently, a good portion of New Glenn was being funded by the Air Force. Blue Origin had won a $500 million contract from the Air Force in October of 2018, which was supposed to be spread over the next six years. But in August of 2020, the Air Force would select United Launch Alliance and SpaceX to provide the Air Force with launches over the next five years. Unfortunately for Blue Origin, the $500 million contract specified that Blue Origin must remain a chosen launch provider for the Air Force to continue receiving payouts. Obviously, given Jeff Bezos' wealth and willingness to splurge on Blue Origin, the development of New Glenn is in no jeopardy due to this decision. However, I'm sure the principle that the Air Force chose SpaceX and ULA over Blue Origin was a downer for the company. So far, the company has invested $2.5 billion into the development of New Glenn. 
and they do have a couple of customers lined up, such as Telesat, OneWeb, and SkyPerfect. Anyways, looking forward, Blue Origin still plans on launching the new Glen for the first time in 2021. If we were to be conservative, it may end up taking until 2022 or 2023. But in the grand scheme of things, the rocket should be completed in the short term future. Once completed, New Glen will become Blue Origin's first orbital launch vehicle, as New Shepard is thus far only a suborbital launch vehicle. As a result, this will likely be Blue Origin's first step in flying commercial crews to the International Space Station. Given their superior payload volume, they'll likely be able to carry more crew members to the space station in one flight than ever before. More importantly, this rocket will provide Blue Origin with a gateway to crewed moon missions, which brings us onto their next major project, the Blue Moon. The Blue Moon is a liquid hydrogen slash liquid oxygen fueled moon lander that comes in at 15 metric tons when fully loaded with fuel. Aside from this, the Blue Moon is designed to be able to deliver a solid 3.6 metric tons to the lunar surface. They're also expected to have a larger variant as well, which will be capable of carrying up to 6.5 metric tons. Before delving into crewed moon missions, the Blue Moon is expected to be used on a variety of different research experiments on the lunar surface. The Blue Moon is even capable of releasing small satellites into orbit around the moon. Anyways, once several of these research experiments have been completed, thus proving the reliability of Blue Moon, it is expected to be used on crewed missions. The regular Blue Moon is only designed to make one ray trips to the moon in order to maximize the payload volume. However, the larger variant will also carry sufficient fuel as well as an ascent module to enable round trips to the moon. The Blue Moon is expected to be used in conjunction with the new Glenn, but that's not the only use case. NASA is also expected to use the Blue Moon. NASA's current plan is to return people to the moon in 2024 using its upcoming Space Launch System. Considering that Space Launch System itself has quite a bit of development still left to go, the plan is to use Blue Moon to land astronauts on the moon, as opposed to building their own new lunar landing system. So that's everything that Blue Origin is working on today, but what about their future? What are Blue Origin's long-term goals? Well, Blue Origin does believe in establishing a lunar base and possibly a lunar colony. However, their main goal is not space colonization, though they are all for it. Taking a look at Blue Origin's mission page, they detail that it is their goal to preserve Earth and tap into space's unlimited resources and energy. You see, Jeff Bezos believes that Earth is by far the best planet, and as a result, we should focus on staying on and preserving Earth, while using space and other planets to better serve us rather than trying to live there. Like I said though, he is all for space colonization, but he doesn't think it's a top priority. According to him, the largest threat to human advancement and innovation is not an existential threat, like a meteor destroying Earth or something like that, but rather an energy crisis. He describes, quote, We will run out of energy. This is just arithmetic. It's going to happen. He explains that our bodies are as efficient as 100 watt light bulbs. Despite this, as a society, the average person living in Western countries consumes about 11,000 watts, or the same energy needed to sustain 110 humans. As the energy demand in Western countries continues to grow and developing countries catch up, he believes that we will have to resort to rationing our energy. Consequently, he believes that the solution to this conundrum is expanding energy production into space. This may consist of setting up large solar panels in space or nearby planets. These solar panels will store their produced energy on battery devices, which will be transported back and forth. This of course requires that the energy produced by such solar panels far exceeds the energy consumed in transporting the energy to the Earth. Currently, our solar technology is nowhere near enough to reasonably offset the energy consumed by rocket launches. But a few decades in the future, this vision might actually make sense. Aside from this, Jeff Bezos also believes that another pressing concern here on Earth is of course air pollution. And to combat this, in addition to converting as many industries as possible to clean energy, he believes that industries that cannot be converted should also be moved into space. At the end of the day, Blue Origin is currently working on making their new Shepard rocket ready for crewed missions. 
Concurrently, they're also looking to finish development of the new Glen and the Blue Moon to expedite the journey in setting up a lunar base. Long term though, they hope to offset the energy and pollution crisis on Earth by moving energy production and manufacturing into space. And that's the state of Blue Origin today. Do you guys agree that energy constraints will turn into a large scale problem in the future? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you guys love competition in the space industry. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas. And consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari and I'll see you guys on the next one.